I give you the winner of Big Brother, Paul Clark. Are you single? <laughs> I'm no. going. No, sir. I'm not single. Why you get a date? She is the youngest child. Give oh. me back my sausage. I haven't got it. <laughs> Day 44, 9.53am. It's Saturday morning, and for the second week running, Josh is the first housemate up. Today, Big Brother will set the group their weekly task. Wow. That's obviously camouflage, no? Oh, that looks like one of the similar yeah, to her thing. Yeah. yeah. I can't work out this side. What do you reckon? Mmm, bloody hell. Same. This is the thing you go in doing it. Oh yeah. my god. And we got to wear microphones doing it as well. It's not, I, just, I don't, I don't I think it's actually. I did break up thinking, oh my god, we're going to have out today. I don't think this is pinned down. This is Big Brother. Would the housemates please not touch any of the structures in the garden? <laughs> oh, I was only looking. 10.27 a.m. Josh and Elizabeth collect supplies from the storeroom. Oh, good morning, hello. Yeah, it's probably about last night. When you think about it, well, this is like week seven now, I think, ooh, that seems like a really long time. And then when I think about it, sometimes, sometimes I think, oh, it has gone slow. But then sometimes I think, mm, I don't know, it's gone fast. It's weird, it's weird to explain. Sometimes I think, you know, the days still go fast. But then, um, mm, sometimes, sometimes I think, yeah, it's gone fast. You know, when you think, how many weeks we've done six weeks and there's only three weeks. When you think we've done six weeks, it's gone fast, but then you think there's only three weeks left. Oh, will they go slower or whatever? You know, but you don't know if you're going to be here for three weeks. But then, um, no, Papa, and I'm fine. 11.42 a.m. Helen has gone back to bed. Big Brother calls Josh to the diary room. Last night, as strange as ever, Friday's always difficult, I think, for everyone and myself. But um, I quite liked Emma, and uh, it was a strange seeing her go. And the group seems to have shrunk even more, so it's very strange. Friday's very weird indeed. I think what happens is that as soon as somebody leaves, there's a vacuum, and that vacuum sort of taken up as people sort of move around and talk and start to discuss um, a lot more between themselves. I've noticed that Elizabeth and Brian have, have started talking a lot more and they were saying last night that, you know, they hadn't really spoken and what happens is, as soon as someone goes, maybe you were close to that person, you move on and you get to know other people a lot, a lot, a lot more and a lot deeper and you find out a lot more about them. I've sort of found, um, I get more time to talk to Dean, Elizabeth, um, even spend talking to Paul a lot more now. So I think that's what happens, as soon as someone leaves, you sort of reshuffle yourselves and, and, and spend more time talking to the others. 12.51 p.m. All of the housemates are in bed. This is Big Brother. The housemates have ten minutes left to finalise any extras for their shopping list. Hmm.
1.10 p.m. All the housemates are now up except Paul. Ryan. That's in a real deep sleep. Coma, coma house. Yeah. It's one o'clock. Is Paul awake? No. Yeah. Yesterday was the fourth consecutive Friday that Paul survived the public vote. Paul's relationship with the mirror has become increasingly important to him. Paul has always been the biggest user of mirrors in the house. He uses them five to ten times as much as everyone else. There are times when he simply can't help himself. Part of this is due to vanity, but mirrors are about much more. The way people use mirrors tells us a lot about their personality. In Paul's case, it also provides important clues to how he feels about himself and his changing situation within the house. There you are, you doing it again. I oh, know. In the early days, Paul's mirror watching was brief and functional. His concern was with his physical appearance. We can see this in the way he fiddles with the front of his hair, the part he assumes to be most visible to others. As the weeks have gone by, Paul has become increasingly confused. He knows that his housemates are rejecting him, but he doesn't know whether the public vote is for him or against his opponent. I can reveal that the fifth person to be evicted from the Big Brother house will be Anna. He's no longer sure how he's perceived. <laughs> Come on, Anna. This has coincided with a fourfold increase in his mirror watching. He's now using the mirror to try and understand how other people see him. This is supported by the fact that most of his mirror use occurs during the weekends, right after evictions. In fact, on one Sunday, he looked at himself around about 30 times in half an hour. But Paul is also isolated from the group. Because he's not getting any support or affection from the others, he's had to seek it elsewhere. And he's done this with mirrors. I've always, I've always wanted to do it. OK, now I'm kind of, it's kind of blonde, isn't it, Dean? Increasingly, we see him touching the top and back of his head. These are classic self-comforting gestures. Paul is actually doing to himself what he would like others to do to him. Recently, Paul has become much more confident, and we can see this reflected in the mirror. Shortly after Bubbles' eviction, we see him rolling back his shoulders, puffing out his chest, and stepping back to admire himself. His attention has shifted from his face to the more powerful muscles of his body. Our self-esteem is based largely on the positive responses of others. Now, Paul isn't getting this from the other housemates, so resourcefully, he's gone elsewhere. When he gets up in the morning, the first thing Paul does is look for himself in the mirror. It's only here that he can get really close to someone, someone whose movements are perfectly synchronized with his own. If Paul's not careful, the most meaningful relationship he has in the house could be the one he has with his own image. 1.30 p.m. Big Brother has set the group their weekly challenge. They must decide what percentage of their shopping budget, of £42, to gamble on successfully completing it. Housemates, this week's task will test your ability to work as a team, Brian. Hey. Hey. That's me, Field. I'm doing very well at that, Ram. I'm doing okay. A skills course has been set up in the garden. It consists of three obstacles, a spider's web, the wall and the toxic swamp. You'll have to take a drum kit apart at one end of the course and then transport it to the other end. To do this successfully, you will have to dismantle the drum kit, negotiate the three obstacles, get all housemates to the finish area, rebuild the kit correctly, and one housemate will sound each drum and cymbal to signal that you're finished. Uh, evil. That's wicked. Pungent. If a housemate or a piece of kit touches the... To successfully pass the task, you have to complete the course within 8 minutes and 15 seconds. This time Easy. includes any time penalties you may incur. I mean, I, I'm confident if I put the work in, I'll do it, but I'm doing off chance. But there's the off chance it. that I could trip or yeah, I could or fall I could over or I could. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's always the off chance anyone can trip exactly. or fall over. There's but more good. likely me or Brian, I would say. I think this is the most exciting task one yeah, of I do, the actually. ones we've had. Yeah. I think it was, and I, I think, think that means we're going to have low. You know, we've got three, four days, but I think this is something that you're going to want to practice. I've gambled 50. Still gonna want to do I'm it. gambling 50. I'm gambling, gambling 30 or 40. I'd gamble what would you 50. do, Paul? Yeah, I'd gamble 50 as what well. What would you do? I'd go 30. 35? 
Yeah, if you can, can you? Well, yeah, yeah, it has to be You can bet any percentage you want. You can do 36% if you want. Yeah, for a laugh, do they say? Oh. Hello, Dean. Hello. We've decided uh, our, our gamble, which is um, 36.4%. Thank you, Dean. Thanks a lot. 1.42 p.m. Helen is cooking porridge for the group. So, guys, we're all going to spend 50 days in this house. 50 yep. days in this house, will you? Oh, yeah. There you 50 are. 50 days. Yeah. My God. Pretty well. Think about being anywhere 50 days in this tiny amount of space. God. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't seem like 50 days, though. I mean, no. Where, where haven't you been? Yes. Um, perhaps I haven't, I haven't sat by there. I don't know, perhaps I haven't sat by there. Wow. You haven't been in the shack? Not you have own. Yeah, I, I have. I think I've been... And when I say everywhere, I mean... You know... But when we were playing tennis, I think... When we were playing tennis, I think we've, we've, we've covered every area of this. Every place in here. Possibly not. I don't think I've been jammed between the shower things. Have you no. been I've in been there? I've been inside there. You've been inside, inside, inside the corner? Inside. I have, yeah. In where? In where? That's a troopy thing. I've been in there. I haven't been after. I haven't been there. There's no camera in there, Dean. I haven't been here as well. <laughs> I haven't been there yet. <laughs> You've been, <laughs> been behind the counter. I have to get a ball, ball yeah. yeah. So have I. I've been around there a few times to clean my I've been in the diary room yet. Imagine if you haven't been in the diary room yet. <laughs> Four twelve pm Big Brother has supplied the group with protective clothing, which they must wear when practising this week's task. Stand by. No! Stand by! Ha-ha, <laughs> 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 Mr Raptor! <laughs> He's hurting me! <laughs> right! <laughs> that was a bit rude. He's flying. <laughs> the boys has gone. So what we, what's yeah. being made? <laughs> Janet Jackson, oh my god, to the party, look at that body shaking that thing, looking up at this seat, got a nice package, all right, guess gonna have to ride it tonight. Edit. 4.32pm. The group practice a section of their new task, transporting parts of the drum kit across a toxic swamp using ropes. Okay, secure. Yeah, actually, yeah, go. Hang on. Actually, actually, wait a minute. Stop, Ellie's got a valid point. Can she just walk around, or does she have to go with someone with a piece? But I think you better go and ask someone. That's them so that. time consuming. It doesn't yeah, say that. Yeah, I know it is, but we just have to make sure whether you have yeah, to do it well, or not. Well, it didn't say. Look, basically, right, we've read this once. No one knows exactly through reading it once. That's, so that's what we're, we're asking. asking. That's why we're asking. Go and ask them. You can clarify. I will. Can I just read this for one second? Mm -mm. Guys, straight, straight away, this is something that we, we're not doing, right? Only one pair at a time may be in the toxic swamp section. When we're walking backwards and forwards over each other, we're fucking that up. <laughs> 4.48pm. Most of the housemates are in the garden. Paul talks to Big Brother in the diary room. The Friday is always going to be the same. Always going to be the same. The only time where the Friday may be different now is if someone who I care about more would be up, i.e. who's left now is Helen, yeah? Um, someone like Helen I could end up bantering with quite easily, and I think that when you start bantering with someone, that means that you've gelled quite well, you can take the piss out of each other and so on. But other people, you know, I, I wouldn't. I would still sort of tiptoe a bit, little bit because I don't feel that I know them maybe well enough. So that would, that would be different yeah if it was like i was up against helen or something then you know i think that friday would be a different day but at the moment it's kind of like the friday comes and it's really really not nice it's not nice at all that smells like something i expelled when i was 14 in my bed oh, oh. Brian. we could all be up when we can meet yeah it could yeah, be it is. <laughs> Six forty one PM. The group have now been up for five and a half hours. 
Dean prepares chilli con carne for a late lunch. Yeah. How's it tasting, 20, Dean? Good, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Cool. 25 to 7. Already? Yeah, Is it? 25 to 7. Dean, we better get changed. You're coming in so hot with me tonight. I can't be bothered. I'm, I'm going to... Should we just stay in? I'll phone Chris, Richard and Keith and tell them. I can't make I won't worry, Keith. He's probably gone out with somebody. Yeah, probably is, actually. <laughs> oh, rude. Just when I'm being nice, getting on a one to one with Josh, sitting there talking to him, going, but he really is a nice guy, maybe, yeah. And then out of the blue. Out of the blue. Going, I'm back to being a painful bitch. <laughs> From the day they met, the relationship between Brian and Josh has been fraught with tension. This week, however, it appeared to hit the rocks. Uh, my second nomination is Brian. Um, the reason for this is it has been a struggle with Brian all along. I don't really think he gets on well with me and he hides it. But subsequently, relations have disintegrated even further. And when the two squared up to talk about the tension between them, Josh made it clear that much of the problem was Brian's sense of humour. But it was a joke. I didn't mean it. It wasn't spice. But sometimes you don't know where to draw the line. That's the problem. I think relatively, when it comes to me and you, it's a, it's a constant misjudgment. I don't think you're ever, ever going to get my character. I think you really are. I don't think I'm ever going, ever going to understand you. Up until recently, humour has been Brian's strongest weapon. But critically, it has depended upon partners like Narinder and Bubble who were prepared to play along with him. Please, I never got a me dance for Big Brother. I bought enough clothes for me. Authority <laughs> <laughs> Perkins, size 12, whatever. Taken out of context, many of the comments made by Brian, Narinder and Bubble could sound extremely spiteful. But none of them does take offence, because they all understand the rules of the particular game they're playing, that of the ritualised insult. Dude, your ears are out of shape. They're never in balance, all right? You are Rule number one is that both parties have to signal a willingness to cooperate. They do this by maintaining high levels of eye contact throughout. Both parties must also exchange insults on a mutually agreed topic. It's like your hair's not done, you got stubble, oh. you just, your fashion is shit. I've got four words for you. Look in the mirror. They're the perfect You're comedy double act. Time. But Narinder and Bubble have gone, leaving Brian without a partner. And now he has Josh in his sights. Who's the bitch in the kitchen? Oh, it's Josh. <laughs> the rules for ritual insults mean that even the severest tease can be funny if reciprocated. But if someone doesn't play along, the insults cease to be funny and they're taken personally. Josh's like, if I wasn't stirring this porridge, I swear I'd belt him one. Although Josh says he's okay. I'm quite far, I'm used to you by now, Brian. His true feelings are revealed in a grimace. You're not though. Oh yeah. No, I think it's sometimes you're not. I, I'm so used to you. Furthermore, the group are picking up on Josh's discomfort. Yeah. I found Brian quite shocking. And I'm thinking, is that humor? Because in my world, that's shocking, yeah. and you don't say that. Yeah. Can Brian be sufficiently sensitive to the responses of the remaining housemates to adapt his humour to the changed situation in the house? 8.50pm. Big Brother has set the group a taste challenge. They've been given samples of ten gourmet cheeses. They must guess which country and animal each cheese is from. They must get half of the cheeses right to be rewarded with a cheese and wine evening. Are we going to do one at a time then? Yeah, well, I've really done each cheese, as you know, so we'll you? start with A, shall okay. we? I just think the... Treat all each right, A. We're start with A. It's like Emmental. Yeah, yes. It's, it's like Emmental. It's like Emmental, is that, that is. That's French then? That's Dutch. C. Well, C is smoked cheese. Smoked cheese, is it? I think. Are you going to have these? Oh, it smells like my feet, guys. Uh, that's vile. It smells of cattle, doesn't it? Yeah, cool. it smells of sheep. Do you reckon? And it smells, smells, it smells of rotten, rotten vegetables. It's, it, for me, it tastes of, of farmyard. Yes. Which can all this right? It tastes yeah. of farmyard, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Do you yeah. don't know that yeah. texture. Yeah, we're going to do the other as well. Do you smell that? Oh, oh that yeah. stinks! You don't have any more cheese up. That smells like something I expelled when I was 14 in my bed. Oh, Brian! Brian! I'm sorry, but it does. 9.51 p.m. The housemates got over half of their answers right. Big Brother has delivered four bottles of specially selected wine, more cheese and crackers. The 
Do you want to smell this? Like, this is really nice. It's not offensive whatsoever. You'll really like it. What, what is it? It's just soft cheese. It's really oh, nice. You will like this. Oh, so, Dean, your best oh, moment in here. Josh. Your best moment is breaking a world record, it's and your really worst moment is not sticking by whales. Exactly. You lost the whale boat, Dean. You like it? Is it nice? It's absolutely like better. Um, better than it doesn't. It's not got such an aftertaste. Oh my god! Josh, is that like soft cheese, it's like in Philadelphia? Yeah, it's stuff? lovely, isn't it? Oh, that's that's disgusting. Disgusting. No, it's not bloody sun. You'll like one of these, Helen. If you try them, you will like find one you like. That's, yeah. that's your Irish folk. Don't this wine's like sherry. Beautiful cheese. Yeah. Nice, isn't it? It's nice. It's, it's like, lovely. It's like Helen, sherry. It's a lovely wine. Help yourself, Brian. What's that one like? This breed, lovely. Hang on, we've got to sit in nice just for the chair because we have to like it. We'll leave this house. A cheese eating, wine drinking, dog loving, intellectual, Tai Chi doing, book reading, loving everyone, not judging. Backgammon playing puff. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to everyone's fantastic cheese. Cheers to guesswork. Cheers yeah, to guesswork. I didn't Absolutely. really know what was everybody. going on. Cheers to Ireland and their lovely cheese. Cheers cheese. to seven <laughs> weeks. Nearly. Cheers, Cheers to listen to Dean because it was Wales. It was Wales. Cheers to nearly seven weeks. Uh huh. Mm. Absolutely. Just pause. Cheers, Dean. What a mate. Cheers, Dean. I can't bother to pause. 11.01 p.m. Big Brother calls Elizabeth Hello. to the diary room. I actually was having a really, probably my first really boring day today. I always find Saturdays quite difficult because it's just really weird when someone's left. It takes quite a while to get used to it. Um, and getting up late as well and sleeping in, I don't like either. Um, so I'm coming in flower. So it's been really, thank you very much. It's been really lovely and I feel such an ignoramus because I didn't even know Rockfall was made from a sheep. 11.32 p.m. The group have drunk four bottles of wine. Dean and Paul discuss what type of women they find attractive. I've only got one thing in common. Have we done the Doesn't matter. Hair colour, eye colour, personality, whatever. I've only got one thing in common. I do like girly girls, and that's tr the truth. And and that, 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 that is a pattern with all, yeah. the, all my girls. But there's got to be an air of intelligence, otherwise it would do your head in. I'd blown it on my... <laughs> Yeah, no, you haven't at all. But it would do your head in if they could. And you look men out there queuing up for you. Oh, get Could you lost. imagine dating a guy who could string sentences together? Bloody chunky blonde Welsh yeah. git from Wales. You've got, a, right, you've got a down on yourself, yeah. mate. Too right. Me little Miss Sparkle, life and soul. Mm. Well, Helen, we've always got each other. Won't be queuing for me either. I could always try and turn you, couldn't well, I, Liz? Yeah, you're right. But you, they're going to be queuing. Mm, you see? Yeah, you're right, but with Helen. Yeah, crew around the block. Don't know She's different. Yeah. We'll be going up, Paul Clark. Silly boy. Blew it. Twelve forty-four a.m. Paul and Helen are in the hot tub. You do contradict yourself in the way, don't you? Oh, I like girly girls. I like girls with long blonde hair. I like girls with tattoos and a t-shirt. I like girls with long brown hair. I think like any type of girls for a don't you? I like girls with a fit. I like any girls who I, when I initially see them, I like gel with them, do you know what I mean? Hello? <laughs> Hello. Hi, big brother. Brian, what were you going to say? We're wondering, can we get more alcohol? But it's purely just for... Uh, Josh, it's what reasons? Stressful. It's, it's for stressful We're reasons. We're very stressed. Yeah. Very stressed. We've done very well. We've had a very fantastic day. Yeah. And we just need to wind down just a little bit more. And I'm not getting on with Josh at all. He's not getting on with me. I think and we, we just need alcohol. Do you, don't, don't you just, agree? Just a touch. Yeah. Just, just to relax. A couple more bottles yeah. would be fantastic. Be fin admit, yeah. There'll be no more alcohol coming into the okay. house tonight. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a very relaxing voice. This is Big Brother. Do they call you Big Brother for a reason? That's okay, so are you single? <laughs> Brian, no. I'm going. No, sit I'm not single why you get a date. Hold on, are, are, are you seeing anyone? <laughs> are you seeing Big Sister? Yeah, Have no, you man. got a boy or a girlfriend? Oh, Brian, you probably... Yeah, come yeah. up for dice. One twenty-seven am Josh has gone to bed. Brian, Paul and Helen are in the lounge while Dean waters a vegetable garden with Elizabeth. I was thinking about sleeping in here the other night. 
But it was Apart when Alma left and I thought I couldn't do that because then H would get really silly, funny <laughs> signals, which for me would be Elizabeth just wants to sleep in the den, but for H would be obviously Elizabeth's making a statement. Do you know what I mean? Want to stay with and me. I just thought I don't want to go there because it doesn't mean that at all, so I will sleep <laughs> in the room. Do you know what I mean? Multiple thinking women. But you know what I mean? No, oh, no you've got to consider the people, that's the thing yeah, about being Yeah, and I just here. thought she just wouldn't understand why. She yeah. would just think, oh, it's this big sign saying that... Yeah, because she's very sensitive and that. Over sensitive. That, that is what she... Yeah, that is what she... E, thinks. paranoid. Yeah. She's got to get a, more of a grounding in what is sensitivity and what is... Mm. Not sensitivity. Mm. Next week, guys, I'll be heading for week eight. This time next week. So next Saturday gonna... will be week eight. Hmm. Yeah, it will. This time next week, somebody else is not going to be here. Mm hmm. Who will it be, Helen? Look what they've got us dressed as, the fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look, a minute. I know. I'm having a laugh. Having a laugh. Dear 45, 8.59 a.m. Paul is a sleep talker. Thank you for picking me. Everyone who did. Um, that was cool. Uh, um, While the rest of the group sleep, Elizabeth and Josh do this week's shopping list. Having failed last week's task, they only have £24.50 to supplement their basic supplies such as pasta, flour and rice. We'll start cutting down on lunches. That's why I thought we eat more beans and stuff, because we can just do beans and toast and stuff for lunch. Mm. I just think, I don't know, I, just, yeah, I, don't, I think we're doing too fancy lunches. Well, I don't agree really. Don't you? <laughs> All right, that's cool. <laughs> I no, I just think... I just think we're not running out of food, we've got enough food, people want lunches like that, great if they don't. OK. Fantastic. And we've got what? We've got... Penny uh, left. No, we've got... uh have not got penny. Oh, we've sorry, 30, 39. 21 pence. So, so three, three, three beans. tins of spaghetti. What's beans? We've got more, we've got six of spaghetti already. Two and of beans then. And we forgot to there. get the quote on our penny chews. Shall I just put it in there? Three penny chews. Go on then. Hello, Josh. Hi, big brother. Got the uh, this week's shopping list. It's not very extensive. Eleven <laughs> twenty a.m. Paul and Brian are still asleep. Helen is making porridge for breakfast. No, guys, there's all the oh, the matter. There's all the sugar in there. It's a bit of an accent to get with the sugar. Did you? Fanny. Porridge is good for you, though, Josh. Huh? Porridge is good for you. Yeah, porridge is good. Do you want that one, Thank you very much. There is bits on the side, sorry. What's it like? It's all right. It's nice. Don't need any sugar, actually. It's quite it's sweet. there. Only quiet in you today. Yeah. I am the porridge princess now, aren't I? You are, babes. You're fantastic at making porridge. If the experience of being the Big Brother house has made children of the group, Helen has carved out a more particular role for herself. She is the youngest child. Give me back my sausage! I haven't got it. <laughs> I want it now! 
Helen's endearing childlike qualities are consistently communicated to the housemates without inhibition. Woo! Can I do it? Oh, yeah, let's have a go. She tends to use short, simple sentences and often refers to herself in the third person, just as a child would. Yeah, but that's just Helen living in Helen's land. Her face is expressive and she frequently widens her eyes when she speaks. This makes her eyes look bigger, a baby-like quality which appeals to the other housemates. We are biologically tuned to nurture and care for the young, ensuring the survival of the species. Even the smallest children will care for a baby. Do you want to go see outside? This has advantages for both sides. For Helen, it means that any weaknesses are tolerated and even indulged by the group. You're missing the gene. I miss my It also means that she is not perceived as a threat to others in this competitive environment. You're in the big brother house. However, the role of youngest child may only be successful in the short term. There's a downside to having a child in the house. So this one's on CPR. Oh shit! There's no chance of me doing that. It'll be, it'll be fine. Big brother will not reveal where the questions are wrong until the person who has answered incorrectly leaves the diary. So then, then announce you have got one question wrong. When the person leaves the guy room, so you're going to know who's got it wrong, and it's going to be me. But That's there's the old chance that I could trip, or yeah, I could I fall could over, yeah, or yeah, I yeah. could well, do there's something. There's always the off chance that anyone can trip exactly. and fall over. But more be. likely me or Brian, I would say. <laughs> Children need looking after. They don't always pull their weight or complete tasks. The costs of looking after her may outweigh the benefits of having her around. When Helen goes off, I can't cope with it. Really? Just you just want to go sit there uh, and be quiet. Just shut down. Uh, why can't you be normal? Why can't I smack you over the head? Why do you make me feel like this when I never usually do? Already we see some signs of resentment creeping in. The second nomination is Helen, and again, she's a lovely person, and I get on with her, but sometimes the decibel levels are just a bit high for me. Unfortunately, one of Helen's most appealing assets could lead to her downfall. 12.28pm. Paul is still in bed. Brian and Dean have told the girls about his sleep talking. <laughs> but here he actually stopped and I thanks everyone for being here. I knew I could do this. I knew I could win this or something like that. Oh, <laughs> oh, what oh, oh, it was Mac. bad. It was bad. <laughs> it's not going to look good. Together. It'll be exciting, it? It'll be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the winner of Big, Big Brother, Brother. Yeah. Paul yeah. Clark. Yeah. Sorry, it's for a second. Paul. Would you, know, you like to see your speech? You, you know, you know, yeah, we'd like your acceptance. Speech. We've had it once. <laughs> We've had it once, but can we have it again? <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity. I knew I could win this. Thanks for being here. Thanks oh, for that's that's me. On my sister's baby's life. And that's you know, saying something. And, that's, and, we, and I went, did he, I woke up and I went, just wins. <laughs> and then you went, <laughs> Brian thought he'd been asleep. I, I, told you asleep. Weeks, I, a... I knew I could do this. I knew I stood a chance. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for trusting me. And vote. Thanks for everyone who voted. Thanks, thanks for everyone who trusted my fans. Who voted for my fans. Your fans are now your fans. On my, on, honestly, on my niece and I wouldn't swear. No, I don't get it. I don't know that anyway. Go back. <laughs> what happens? You gave you give yourself, you won. In your mind, you were talking about you won. You were talking in your sleep this morning and you gave your acceptance speech. speech. For winning this, you said you knew Definitely you could... for winning this, you sure? Yeah, yeah. thank all my fans for voting for me. Voting. 1.14 p.m. Big Brother has given the group the chance to speak to a psychotherapist. Today, Dean, Elizabeth and Josh have all spent an hour with him. It's the only time the housemates can speak without being recorded. Before he entered the house, Josh told Big Brother that his family had known about his sexuality for a long time. 
In fact, only a few of them did. Was yeah. it good, Josh? It's very good. It's a bit really? Clean, a bit cleansing, to be honest. A bit cleansing? Yeah, a bit oh, emotional. Good. Really? Yeah. Hard job. Yeah, I was a bit tearful. Did he um, um, ask you the question? You? Yeah, he did. So that's all about sex, kind of sexuality. Hit... Really? Why do you think I didn't tell my family to the last minute? And... Oh, because I, I suppose, because yeah, this is the first time... Yeah, yeah. You talked to him after you didn't tell Yeah, him. and he asked me why do you think I why didn't why I didn't tell the truth to Big Brother and all stuff like that. Oh, so. I love you. So it was a bit mad. It's, it's hard him. coming in here though as well. Coming just coming late. He's had to deal with He's had a lot of Do you know what I mean? Living. Telling it was just, it was a bit not mad, telling your family mm, and then and... it's a oh, it's a lot to deal with. Both him and Brian are going out not knowing. What's waiting? Oh, I did concerns about what my family and how this thing in you know, I didn't want to hurt them. I said I felt selfish coming in here actually. I told him that. Yeah, but it is, at the end of the day, it, huh? is, it is about you, isn't it, mate? I know, I know. Do you know, and hiding that, it, it, while you might think it's selfish because you might hurt people because they don't know about that, the reality is they have to know about it because that is you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I said it's, it's brought us two years close to me and my family. I probably would be another two years down the line if I told them. Yeah. So, so that's it, the positive yeah, thing. Yeah, it's the positive thing. I just said I just felt a bit selfish being in here. Oh, you shouldn't think like that. <laughs> no. What did he say? If you were to come in, you wouldn't have met, met oh, any of us, and especially me. Especially Miss Sparkles, I know. Uh, I'm on a boobs. I've got a boobs. I've got a boobs. Oh, okay, I've got a stomach. Bum down, bum down. I don't think I'm going to nominate Paul tomorrow. Elizabeth is the third and final housemate to have spoken to the psychotherapist today. No, it's actually, you know, it's been nice talking to you because I feel a lot. Really, really positive now. Uh, I, I feel like I've been filled up again. Well, yeah. Yeah. Do you know when you feel like your batch is running a bit like low? Like a reality. Touch, yeah, touch back touch to reality. reality. Isn't it? Yeah, that yeah. this all does mean something. Because he was kind of reminding me of my motivations. And I was like, yeah, I am here for that. It doesn't have to be a problem solving thing either. Yeah. It's not about solving. You don't solving... have to come in here because, you know, you think, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm going mad. Issue. Can you help me? It's not yeah, that. It's, yeah, it can just be like a nice chat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it was really nice. Thank you, Brett. And I said when I came out, I said, thank you very much. I feel very positive. I just kind of feel happier. Yeah, good. Not that I was feeling really unhappy, but, yeah, but I feel a bit of a fuller person again. No, it's good, so, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it's nice. I've got to do my flan now. <laughs> mm. Two thirty p.m. The group are snacking on the cheese and crackers. Josh is making a fan. I've been having impure thoughts lately, though. Edmund has those, though. Not as much as you do. I have them a lot because of my age, though. I just prefer not to talk about them. I'll tell you a story, right? Look at you, Scarlett. She's story. Friend of mine. Walked, he were, he bought this house in, in Mosley. Where's Mosley? Well, Birmingham. Birmingham. Really big house. And they were do, he was doing it up. And uh, while he was doing it up, he sorted the house out. He took up a carpet and underneath he found this key. Right. He tried it in a few doors and thought, oh, no, it mustn't be a key from here, you know, so he just put it on a shelf. And when he got to the top of the house, he was in the attic. And you noticed in the corner, like a small door, only about that big. Right, yeah, this small door about that big. He tried it and it was locked. So he thought, <laughs> look at you. Right, calm down. So, bodies of children. So he thought, you know, he tried it and thought, oh, whatever, you know, it's, it's into, the, into the other loft space where oh. the water tank is or whatever. So he went upstairs with the key. Turned it, opened the door, and he could just about crawl... Oh, he could just about crawl into the space. In the corner, he thought he could, like... He could make out a chair, right? And there was, like, a little girl sitting on the chair, crying, right? He said, little girl, why are you crying? And she said, I'm not a little girl. I'm a great big... <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Oh. 
4.46pm. The group are chatting about tomorrow's nominations. The next Big Brother eviction will take place on Friday the 13th of July. How you feeling about tomorrow? Dunno, it's got to be done, I'm there, but I don't want to do it. See what I mean? Yeah. There's got to be more, two more than two people for eviction this week, haven't there? There's got to be, I reckon there's got to be about three. We could all be up. One week, can we? Yeah, it could yeah, be. It is. I said to Elizabeth, I said, I can't leave on Friday the 13th, that's just pure evil. Well, Stop playing yourself. Sorry, Josh, it's just around your presence. <laughs> I want to be honest about it, you know. Can you imagine? Can you imagine me leaving on Friday? That's just the. I mean, that's just evil. That's a sign that that's, that's, in, that's evil, written. That's evil. That that's written. It's written in the stars. It's my destiny to go on Friday the Thirteenth. That's just pure written. Evil. Be good if we were all up. I'd love we're all up. Be a test for all of us. The weakest link would not be in the house anymore. That's what you like. What are you looking at? I'm not, I'm not staying in here, I'm staying into oblivion. Is it nice? Hmm. What's it like there? Blank. Mm. You will know soon enough, Brian. You shall <laughs> be with us. In oblivion. With us. In oblivion. With who? Soon. Oh, Josh, ha ha. Dean, tell him stop messing. <laughs> Five twenty four PM and the group start to practice the web section of their weekly task. They must get the eighteen pieces of the drum kit and themselves through different holes in the web without touching it. They're wearing the protective clothing Big Brother has provided. Look what they've got us dressed as the fuckers. <laughs> have a look a minute. I know, I'm having a laugh. I can't even grab my hands. You can't even you won't be able to pick the thing up. I feel very hot. I feel very hot. Black tax seed. But the this yeah, thing, the Blake 7 thing. Yeah. So we're going to take you? Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, go. Right, ready? Yeah. Watch your feet, Ryan. Got her right, right now. Yeah. Straighten her arms. Mind your head, keep your arms straight. OK, and keep her weight. Keep her weight. Yeah, so I'm not on her entirely. Keep her weight. I've got her. Watch her bum through. I've got her. 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 Okay, go slowly, go slowly. Right, let me get my hand under. Oh, I've got good, the main of his weight. I've got all of his weight now. Yeah, he's going. Walk Close away. Feet, 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 that's it, don't look up again. Keep going. Come on, her boobs. Boobs, get the boobs. I've got her boobs. Okay, I've got a stomach. Bum down, bum down. We're getting you involved. Uh -huh. Learning to teach to teach Kurt Curry. Oh, oh, I wouldn't mind a bit, mate. What if you met the, the ideal girl of your dreams, right? Thought she was lovely, fantastic, and all that, blah blah blah. Mm. But then when when it gets down to business, she she don't want to have sex before marriage. I think she's trying to trap yeah, him. Yeah, I would. I'd be a bit concerned. Mm. Mm. Won't feel too chuffed. Mm. No, mm. die. Oh. I'll probably ask if I can put on the side. <laughs> Brian. Oh, where's the one dice gone? Oh, I'm doing very well. I'm actually quite impressed. Mm. I'm be honest, Josh. I'm actually finding this a very emotional very part of the of the um, the studio, and I'm actually beginning to fill up with tears. I knew you would. I knew, it's you working with me. The first yeah, time. it's quite emotional. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit moved. Yeah. I'm okay to continue. I'm okay. You're right. I'm you're sure. Yeah. Okay, I've got. A, if I'm, I said I've shaved my hair. If I'm here next week, if I'll play back, I'll learn to play backgammon. That's sad, isn't it? Week eight, I might have to play backgammon. We should start making dares with each other, shouldn't we? To make them nominated a bit more fun. Yeah. Do you think we should? Mm. Like Dean, if you don't get nominated, you will have to. Dressing my clothes for the day? That's not too bad. 
Elizabeth has to wear makeup all day. Uh, uh, hair done. She has to go as a girl the whole day. But with a dress. <gasps> Completely yeah. chic. Okay. I think Helen should dress. Mm. As a schoolgirl. Okay, Paul, no. another fantasies. What can Helen do? Speak as quietly as Emma for the whole day. Yes. Mm. Impossible. No screams. No way! <laughs> 10.40 p.m. Dean, Brian, Helen and Josh are playing a game in which they have to go through the alphabet and think of animal names starting with each letter. Brian is stuck on the letter I. Have you all got one? Yeah. Are these, are these familiar animals? Mm, not really. I think they're going out. Ewog. Toggywog. Ewog. I'm Falkywog. Iguana. Okay. What? Iguana? Yes, mate. Okay. Helen. Helen, you're Helen first. Now. J. It's two. It's loads. A Jimmy. A what? Jimmy. Jimmy. Another name for baby kangaroo? Joey. Joey. Joey, I love that. Okay, we no. love that. Joey. Um, Jimmy. Jackal. Jellyfish. Uh, oh. Jellyfish? Yeah. Brian. I don't know the K. Koala bear. There you go, dude. You don't She's know my ass. What's the word? Big Brother calls Dean to the diary room to see how he found mm -hmm. talking to the psychotherapist. It's um, completely different. Firstly, you're very aware you're not being filmed and that, that it's not going to be broadcast and it can't be broadcast. This room seems then more like a... It seems more intimate and more private. And, yeah, I've, I've, I've thought about when I leave, um, maybe getting... Maybe getting a therapist um, because this this whole experience for me has been one of of self discovery and pushing myself this way and that and trying to unravel who I am. How are your feelings about nominations this week? Um, it's really hard this time. I think Paul has kind of put up with so much, been nominated so many times that I'm I don't think I'm going to nominate Paul tomorrow. And that sort of makes my mind up for me in a way as to who to nominate, although I don't want to nominate either of the people who that leaves for me, because personally there's, there's two people I would never nominate left in the house. So in that way the choice is kind of made up for me, but it's just, it's not easy now. It really, really is not easy. <laughs> Next, our series Lawless continues with a look at the world's oldest profession, prostitution. And there's more from Big Brother tomorrow at 10. You can buy a Big Brother voucher for the latest gossip ringtones and icons sent direct to your mobile. Vouchers priced at £4.99 are available in the shops right now.